Hello everybody. This video is going to talk about using the Sagmilling.com software to generate Monte Carlo simulations. What we're going to do instead of using raw laboratory data is we're going to substitute in probability models and let the software generate random data within these probability models. We're using like a, a normal or a Gaussian model. In the previous video I described how work index data can generally be viewed as uh, being normally distributed as long as you've separated your domains properly and we're going to take advantage of that to run these probability distributions by specifying instead of raw data we're going to specify a mean for a value like the ball mill work index and then a standard deviation and then the software can generate the, the range of different ball mill work indexes as the model iterates to give us this bell curve of what will be ball mill work index data as the simulations are run. The data that we're going to use to run this demonstration comes from published data from the BOTO project in Senegal. So the 43101 report lists a set of SMC test results, ball mill work index results, bond abrasion index results, and a small number of crushing work index numbers. So we're going to use this as the basis. And you'll notice here too that they have separated out the, the types of samples into whether they were fresh rock. So this would be like primary ore, unaltered ore. And then this altered ore, which is saprolite and or sap rock and or other things. Now, um, so using the QQ plots that we described earlier, we can test whether or not we can just load all of the ball mill work index data in and use it as a single domain. And the answer is you can't, right? It doesn't follow the, the normal distribution we expect if we just dump everything in here and the Shapiro-Wilk test fails. So we're going to have to distribute the ball mill work index a little bit differently. So the obvious thing to do is let's try taking that fresh rock domain and plotting it up. And, and it does follow a normal distribution. And so if we look at just the fresh rock, we can get an average and a standard deviation for that. And it has this normal characteristic that allows us to use the Gaussian model. We can do the same thing with the saprolite and the sap rock. Again, you put those together, they look like they're a single domain. There's not as much data here. Obviously, there's, there's fewer blue crosses, but there's still enough here that we've got a normal distribution and we can generate an average and a standard deviation. So here is the standard test work template that we use to load work index data into sagmilling.com. And this is what it would look like if we loaded in just the, the actual data that was generated on the project. This is the, what we got from the 43101. So this table represents this table and uh, just the ball mill work index column here. But we're not going to actually load that in. What we're going to load in instead is the, the mean and the standard deviation. And we're going to set it up so that each row in our test work template is going to represent one iteration of the model using one uh, mean standard deviation combination. So basically that will be one UGM. And then we'll get multiple iterations of that UGM just by having multiple rows. So this is what we would normally do with real data. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to repurpose the test work template to give us the statistical distributions. So I've already done this offline. We worked out what the mean and the standard deviation of the ball mill work index is. Uh, we'll do the same thing with the crushing work index. Now there's not a lot of crushing work index data here, so I'm, I've kind of just plugged in numbers and I've kind of picked standard deviations that look like what I would expect to see here. Ordinarily, if you would have more data here, uh, I'm not just plugging numbers in that I'm making up. We're also going to look at this, the density because changes in density will affect the, 
um, the mill power draw, particularly in autogenous mills. So we know that the fresh rock has a mean density of about 2.75 and a standard deviation. Saprolite has a lower density and a slightly lower standard deviation. We're going to load the density mean into the column, which has normally got the crushing work index maximum. We're going to load the density standard deviation into the column that is normally the density minimum. Now, rod mill work index, we're not going to do exactly the same thing as the ball mill work index. We're not going to work out what the, the mean and the standard deviation is. And that's because the rod mill work index normally is related to the ball mill work index, so they're not completely independent. And you, you can kind of see this here, that there is a, a trend where harder on one work index is harder on the other, and vice versa. So rod mill work index, because it's not independent, we need to actually generate a model that is based on the ball mill work index, which has been generated. That's going to set the mean for the rod mill, and then we just apply the standard deviation to that. So the model for rod mill work index is going to look like this. We're going to have a slope, which comes from the um, which comes from the regression. We're going to have an intercept, which comes from the regression, and then we're going to have our standard deviation that goes into the grams per revolution column. The P80 column, we're going to use that for the intercept, and the rod mill work index column, we're going to use that for the slope. So when we load all of that in, we're going to end up with a test work template that looks kind of like this. So we're going to have rod mill, sorry, we're going to have ball mill work index average, ball mill work index standard deviation, rod mill work index slope and intercept, and then the rod mill work index standard deviation, crushing work index average standard deviation, density average and standard deviation. So this is going to be our test work template for one set of, in this case it's life of mine data. Now I know from the mine plan the life of mine fresh rock is going to constitute about 87 percent of the uh, of the ore that's going through the mill and the saprolite and transition zones are about 13 percent. So if I arbitrarily choose that I want 365 rows of data, that's 365 simulations to represent this life of mine, that says that we're going to need 318 of those rows having fresh rock characteristic and 47 rows having the saprolite. So that's what we've done here. If I scroll down, you can see that the sample number 318 is, is fresh rock, and then the next sample number becomes the transition uh, saprolite. And you can see that the, the mean and the standard deviation change at this point. So each one of these rows will be one run in the model. We're going to load the test work now. So we're going to load Monte Carlo simulations, and we're going to start with the life of mine. And add, just like you would normally do, you're going to load samples in. And the samples are going to be the, the name and the litho. Paste. Okay, there's our litho column, there's a name column, we're good, continue. And then we're going to load in the test work. So the ball mill work index test work was actually already in that block of data, so I just paste that again. And you can see here we've got the ball mill work index, that'll be the uh, the mean value and the grams per revolution, that's the standard deviation. Always, always, always set the synthetic flag to one when you're loading this data in, otherwise you're going to mess up some of the charts on other projects because it'll think that this is real laboratory data. This is synthetic data used for Monte Carlo simulations. So this synthetic value always has to be set to one. 
Now we're going to load in the crushing work index and the density. So again, that comes from yeah. So that comes from this other part of this table. So we're going to copy and paste. So again, the synthetic flag that's set. Crushing work index, average standard deviation. This is your density average, density standard deviation. So we can load that. Uh, the same for the rod mill work index. And there we go. So we can now load up the single stage sag circuit. So I loaded this offline. So you can see that for the single stage circuit, we've got crushing, rod mill, and ball mill work index numbers that are generated randomly. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to refresh this page, and you'll see that these numbers change. So they're changing every time I refresh this, this page, every time I refresh this simulation, it changes based on those probability distributions that we loaded into the test work templates. And now I can run all 365 of these samples that I loaded and get uh, a series of throughput estimates for all of the probability distributions that we ran. Now, I happen to know that the target, see if I can get that out of the way, the, the target throughput here is about 340 ton an hour, so somewhere about here. So this circuit is, is easily capable of running the life of mine uh, material. Now, if I refresh this, so I press the green button here, that will recalculate these throughputs. So you notice that the throughputs here have changed. Every time you recalculate, it reruns all 365 of these samples that I loaded again and again and again. So you can do something like this, where you take, you go and export your spreadsheet. And then we're just going to delete everything except the tons per hour. Okay, so there's our tons per hour. And I refresh it again. Export another model run. And then all I want is this tons per hour column. So I'm going to copy that and paste it into here. See, a little bit of difference. Good. Run that again. Okay, now that we've got a block of data here with five different model runs in it, let, let's plot this data up. So I'm just going to set this to run one and run two, run three, run four, run five. And then we can just take that whole block of data and plot it and see what kind of variation we're getting in our work index data. So make that a little bit bigger. There. Okay, so what this is showing is that as you run the model, each run comes in slightly differently and you end up with this, this kind of uh, like, like a thick bar of data that goes through that represents um, like, like the probability distribution across all of the, the year that you're trying to simulate in this data set. So this is useful information that it gives you kind of a probable range of throughput that you're going to expect to see. You're more likely to be somewhere in this package of lines than on any one of the lines. So again, you can think of this as a way of, of assessing the variability in your ore body and what the risk is of going above or below your target throughput when you've got the, these probability distributions. So this is a useful check. Does our design objective of 340 ton an hour, are we exceeding that regularly? And the answer is yes. Basically, all of these simulations say that this design on the life of mine data, it does work. So that should do it for this video. This is how you load 
information suitable for Monte Carlo simulations into Sagmilling.com and generate randomly distributed, but you know, fit to your laboratory data, fit to your ore characteristics, um, information suitable for generating throughput estimates and tweaking things like your UGM distributions. So that should do it. We'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.